is the Glass Cannon Network. You're having fun with your friends and you're rolling dice. You're playing make believe and it's really nice. Side quest, side sesh. That's the name of this show. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Side Quest, Side Sesh. <laughs> Obviously, last week we celebrated our eight year anniversary, our quinceanera, as they say. <laughs> now, what a lot of people don't know is that the uh, the first day we ever recorded, we recorded four episodes because we thought like, oh, we just hang out for four hours, record four one hour episodes. And we sat there for about eight hours. And at the end, if you listen, we've mentioned this before, if you listen to episode four, uh, Matthew's very quiet for like the last 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> sneaks out. It's because he left. You left. <laughs> and, and on the day only reason, one, <laughs> the only day reason, one on started day one. the history of us being unable to come in anywhere close to the predicted end time. I mean, I'm talking like a three to four hour difference. I was yeah. like, I have plenty of time. We really, we really <laughs> miscalculated. But the only reason I bring it up is it's about to happen again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in over eight years. <laughs> It is about the, to happen again. To pull back the curtain a little bit, we were about to hit record, then Joe was like, I, I, I can't. I can't do this. These characters aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the changes, sure. It was a whole thing. I mean, sweated through his shirt trying to make the character work. <laughs> is your shirt inside out? <laughs> is it? it looks no, like you, I think I'm, I'm all right. I'm okay. okay. Uh, yes, Matthew. Uh, Matthew has a hard out today that we have just... We've just gone over. It's uh, now, so it's we'll now a you. soft out. It's a soft out. It's a soft out. Yeah. Harden that out up and maybe we can help you. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you something. Uh, it's summertime. It's uh, it's happening. I don't know if we've passed the official day of summer or not, but I, it's, I hate it. It's awful outside. You don't want to leave the house. You, you sweat constantly. Let's talk about the beach because that's like one of the good parts of summer. You go into the beach, whether you got a beach house or you just, you know what? We're, we're going, we're taking the kids and the dog, we're going to the beach. Uh, what is your beach? Uh, what is your beach jam? Do you like to lay out and get sun? I know like some of our Irish friends, that won't be their answer. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> lay out and like bake, uh, read books under an umbrella. Or like spend time in the ocean all day or walk. I mean, these aren't the only options. There's there's a ton of different options. Uh, but everyone has their own like way of doing the beach. And I'm curious, what's everyone's way? I'm going to start with you, uh, Pasty White Joe. I am a sit under the umbrella and read a book kind of beach guy. Yeah. But I will say my my favorite thing, that's just like now because I'm old and I've had so many joint surgeries. Before that, <laughs> well, I, was was in, the I was in the ocean <laughs> all day, every day that I was at the beach. Like I'd be out for brief periods. Uh, there was never a time in my life when I was a lay under the sun and bake kind of guy. Like I, I just loved swimming in the ocean. And so I still do it and I, I go out there, but it's, it's uh, I, I don't do it as long. <laughs> I come back for stretches and just read under an umbrella. Does the water hurt your joints? It's good for your joints, your aching bones and stuff. Uh, uh, not when you get into the kind of waves that I get into. Oh, right. Perhaps <laughs> if you're just dabbling at the edge with the old ladies, yes. But I, I go deep. I do some body surfing on the farthest waves. It's sure. It's, it's hard on the body. No, I understand. If you, I love when you like body surfing. And you just get like bundled. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> it's when you feel that like jolt of speed, like something <laughs> otherworldly just happened to you. It's just so awesome. It's such an awesome like, feeling. There's that brief moment where you don't know which way is up. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's good to throw yourself off every once in a while. You get a little panic uh, there, but it's all right. Jared, what's your uh, what's your beach your go to beach stuff speedo and metal detector troy <laughs> i knew I knew i was like i knew he was gonna say something <laughs> preposterous and a lie about himself but i couldn't figure out what it was gonna be and you he surprised me yet again i believe it i could just picture it very clearly and i don't know why <laughs> No, I, I, I uh, serious, serious answer. Can I stay in the beach house with the book? Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. So you stay oh, oh, far away. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I you know, I, I go to the beach, but I don't really, I don't really like the sun. I'm, I'm kind of Joe complected. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I try to stay out of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's always that guy at the beach house. It's like, you guys have fun. You sit on the porch. Yeah. I'll be here looking at this painting of seashells. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, what's your, uh, what's your, uh, I imagine half the day is just getting sand out of the body here. <laughs> well, I just shave, I shave my entire body before I go to the beach. <laughs> like Michael Phelps. Uh, no, I'm, I'm like Joe. I'll do, I like to sit in the shade and read, though I will alternate that. Like I'll sit in the shade and read until I get hot. Then I get up and go in the ocean. I swim in the ocean until I get until I'm ready to go back in. And I sit in the shade and read. Though I feel like I'm about to take my first uh, trip to the beach with my daughter, and I feel like I'm never going to do that again until yeah. she's like 15. It's a lot of work. Um, is she is she like running and walking? Sort of yes. like oh, so yeah, here, enjoy it, have fun. Yes, as someone said to me, you no longer take vacations, you take trips. You take memories, <laughs> uh, memory-making opportunities. Uh, I'm very excited. It should be fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Just uh, sit under the umbrella and sit really far away from the beach. Skid, I – have you ever worn a bathing suit? Yeah. <laughs> I wear a bathing suit all the time. <laughs> I'm wearing one right now under nice my – Nice little one piece? Under my uh, jogging pants. I just, I can't picture you as the beach going type. Do you like the beach? I love the beach. I I used to love the beach. Uh, I used to, when I I would go to the beach and I would just play in the waves like a dim-witted child. (laughs) Not swim, but I would just like jump in the round of the waves. Like that's That's mostly what I would do until one time I went out. It was uh, Long Island and the surf was a little too rough and I started to get a current started to pull me out to sea. Oh. And I was like... I think I'm going to die. I pr- I was pretty sure I was going to die, and I was able to f- finally like get back enough uh, to to shore. But uh, that was it for that. <laughs> so now I'm just going to hang out in the house. Yeah, you can hang. <laughs> you can I hang have no out. interest in sun. I like walking along the beach. That's fun. Mm. And you know, looking at the water is that's fun. But no more. I'm not getting in it anymore. Skid and I will stay in the house and play checkers. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys at dinner. Do jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> oh, yeah. the, actually, yeah. we, so did you guys ever play these? I there, they, there were a couple different branded options, but they were a jigsaw puzzle that came with a mystery. So you would read the mist, you would read the little booklet. It was like a, like a, I don't know, like a short story mystery. And then at the end, you would get to the crime scene and then you would make, you would do the jigsaw puzzle to show you the crime scene. And then you would, based on the clues you saw in the picture, you could maybe solve the mystery. Did you ever play? Oh. These were amazing. No. No, that sounds cool, though. They no. were so much fun. We did them on at the beach, actually. We were like at night, we would do the jigsaw puzzle. Let's do that, that was a cool con. thing when we did Blade Runner for uh, Labs. What, that was a cool feature in that game, was like you would get, we, we uh, give the players like a, a picture of the crime scene, and it's up to them to like look at it and like ask questions, like see what, that's cool. What's out of place. That's that's awesome. Really cool. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, it probably doesn't surprise you that I, not that you asked, but uh, I am the uh, sit out and get as much sun as possible. Uh, and then when I get really, really hot, go in the ocean for like an hour, as far mm-hmm. out as I can go, ride the waves in, come back, flip over, bake, um, which is all the more crazy because I didn't start wearing sunscreen until I was like 34. Um and I just, I, I've always been that way. It was just like, I wanted to get as much sun as possible. I wanted to just cook. And then I would go in the ocean, come back. Um, but now I wear sunscreen. <laughs> A little bit. SPF 5. <laughs> oh, God. SPF now, I know how, now I know how you have, you get your swarthy olive complexion. <laughs> <laughs> swarthy is, a, is definitely a term I'd use to swarthy, describe Troy. <laughs> swarthy is a problematic word. Let's be honest. I guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, yes, I uh, I love it. But I, I thought there'd be one other sun worshiper here. I guess it's just me. Sometimes I'll lay on my deck. Love it. Nope. You good for you. Four guys who play tabletop role playing games. <laughs> yeah. What they like to do at the beach. Did I tell you? I've, I don't. I probably said this on the show before. We were like, when I was a kid, I know I've said this before. Like, we all we wanted to do in the summer was just fucking play D anD D all oh, day yeah. and all night. But my mom and like the a couple of my friends' moms, their whole thing was like, it's the summer, you go outside. And so we'd have to go outside. And if we wanted to play D&D, we had to play like on the pool deck, like in the sweltering sun. <laughs> it was like, I don't even want to play this. Why can't I just go inside? Can we go try, please? I, I, I told Joe about this. I was at the pool, like the... um. 
the club pool with my kids last Sunday, and there was a kid who had brought his entire Dungeons and Dragons box set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He didn't even have anybody to play with. He was just oh. sitting there with it. Oh, oh that's it. I know. It <laughs> just was just like, oh, that was me. That was Skip. That was <laughs> yeah. that was a you entered a time portal of some kind and you saw me. <laughs> and uh, that's what I got happened. I probably shouldn't have done this. I walked up to him and I said, Hey little boy, you wanna <laughs> enter you wanna enter a realm of magic? <laughs> <laughs> And then his parents were like, (laughs) his parents like complained. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, it's such a nice thing you offered. And yeah, I I was was offering to GM. I guess I should have said it in a different way. Maybe it's the wording. I don't think it needed more context. (laughs) Hey, little boy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you want to enter Realm of Magic? To me, I mean, in your defense, that is the voice you use to GM all the time. Welcome yeah, to the world of, welcome to the world of Galarian. It puts the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are about to re-enter the world of Galarian. Last week we um we built some characters. Uh one returning character in Karazar, the Knoll fighter, and then three new characters, one of which has changed several times, even in the last week. Ugh. Joe, what the hell are you playing, man? It's just such a nightmare. That's such yeah. a nightmare. Is it do you ever just enjoy stuff? <laughs> I can't have such a hard time <laughs> enjoying anything. Uh I just I had such a clear picture and then I screwed it up and I, I fouled it all up. But uh no, So originally it was skeleton sorcerer, but you just felt like uh, no, you originally liked the it was skeleton fighter, like okay. an archery build, which I, I really liked. And I and I kinda I had that idea in mind. And then we bullied you. You know, we you know, it was like do a sorcerer, and I I liked the idea too, but then I, I was really trying to avoid spellcasting, but ultimately you at the end of the session that we did was were like, why don't you try champion? And I was like, this sounds amazing. And and it's true. It sounded amazing. It's just not actually amazing once you do all the all the you know the nitty gritty. I think fighter would have been cooler. Uh but whatever. It is what it is. We you know it well, was the recorded. Reason it's, it the was reason, recorded. I can't go back on it. <laughs> the reason it's not particularly amazing, it just allows us it, it, it forces us to have to do a little bit of uh finicky uh nudging the rules a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so what it Homebrew. did was when I thought about building it as a fighter, I had this neat idea where it was like I can't be healed like regular people are healed, and I need to address this. I can't rely on Matthew to do it for me. He I'm a barber. only thinks about his just a barber, yeah. I'm just a so right. He just he only thinks about living PCs, which is just <laughs> it's it's so close minded. Uh, and so I was like, I have to address this myself. And there's an awesome feat that you can. T- I had to put a couple points in wisdom, but I can take medicine, train medicine, and then I can take stitch flesh, and it allows you to use treat wounds on undead. And I was like, I could treat myself, That's which just cool. sounded really cool. I was like, I'm into this. When we went the champion route, though, that changed things. Well, because you and I discussed off air and you said that we could house rule it. Because what I ended up building is a liberator champion who is a follower of Callistria, who is a chaotic neutral deity of revenge. And he is all about, you know, earning people's freedom, uh, helping them get their freedom, but also trying to free undead. You know, it's like one of his particular things and trying, even if it's from themselves and uh, trying to destroy necromancers at all costs. So what ends up happening is you can't take that by Pathfinder rules and also not have lay on hands, which is positive energy healing, which didn't really make sense for the character concept. And uh, you were like, we can house rule that so you can be a liberator, but your touch is a touch of corruption and not a lay on hands, which I'm fine with. Sadly, it means I can't heal the party, but it does mean I can heal myself, which means I didn't have to do treat wounds and medicine and all that stuff. So I was able to put those things in some other things. And so, yeah, anyway, I, I ended up being happy with it, but we still had to kind of house rule a little. Yeah, a little bit. you know, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but uh, I don't mind bending the rules now and then. If yeah. it means we're all going to have a good time at the table. And I'm honestly curious what's going to happen with this in, uh, you know, this fall when Pathfinder changes, you know, when it, when it, when it publishes its update and alignment is gone, it's like, how mm-hmm. is this going to impact champions mm-hmm. and how are they going to play? What's going to be a little different? I, yeah, I just, I don't understand I don't, that at all. I don't know what, how that's going to work. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it. I just hate the restrictions. I hate it. 
I yeah. think that it is foolish that I can't play a character that, you know, wants to do good and emanates evil energy. You know what I mean? Like, why yeah. can't I just do that? Like, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> why can't as, you? as long as it doesn't feel imbalanced, you right. know, like. And that's uh, that's only my ever concern is the imbalance because I'm like there are people that make this game that know the math and the balance way more than we ever could. That's so true. I, I want to lean on trusting them, and that's why I'm always wary of house ruling stuff because I feel like we're going to house rule ourselves into a tricky situation. But uh, you know, but something I feel like, like that. I mean, you're just really expanding your idea of what. Uh, you know, character-wise, what can yeah. go on in the game. Exactly. And this, look, Skid let me do it in Legacy of the Ancients. I don't mean to always be, like, um, harping on this it's, or, or be the guy that needs special orders. But it's just that, like, I love the idea of evil kind of characters and exploring that without it being locked into the same, you know, regiments that you have to do within the, the mechanical rules. And so, you know, as long as it doesn't feel like it imbalances the game, I'd like to explore that kind of stuff. You yeah. totally are the guy at the restaurant that's like, can I get that? I know it says no substitutions, but I have these seven <laughs> substitutions. <laughs> exactly. I didn't want to be that way. Uh, well, <laughs> cars are the null. I was going to say no, Noel fighter, uh, Balthazar, the mild, the automaton monk, uh, champ kindly, the <laughs> skeleton liberator. Uh, and of course, uh, who could forget Rufus of Opara, the human summoner who has and a, Velth and Velthrex and Bob and Ralph Velth. I'm amazed that you've gotten that right now. Every single time Velthrex. I have, and Bob. It, I have it written down right here. <laughs> you brought your notebook. <laughs> uh, this is the, this is the party, but let's find out how this party got together so let's uh we can just get some music going let's get into I, this yeah, i don't have here. the slightest idea how this party gets together and i'm very nervous <laughs> it'll be dark i want dark music something like somber nighttime music-y situation okay man it's fun this is just like a dream to be able to like come back into characters after even though it's only one character returning but to come back into a story fucking hbo does it they take years off between seasons why can't we yeah there is no reason why we can't. The answer is we can. We can. Bring back we Perry Mason. That. And we just did. Bring we back, just did. Bring back disorganized play. Bring back Arliss. <laughs> <laughs> Sports night. Yeah. Cool. Sports night was on ABC. Yeah. Bring it back. It's been over 10 years since the Shay, S-H-A-E, uh, known as Nikesor, escaped the shadow plane and assumed the throne of Carpad after executing the Baron and Baroness Baroy, as well as executing the heroes who were ultimately responsible for the Shay's release back into the world from the Midnight Mirror. If you remember initially, Nikesor, it, it was like a, uh, it was a grudge and it was also like the, the, the Kyle are being held back. You know, they're, they're, they look down upon people who have shadow plane blood in them. I want to come back and... Duh, duh. Well, in the 10 years that have passed, if that was his initial goal, that goal has changed. Because once you give someone power, what do they want? More power. Cake. And cake. <laughs> but especially power. So today... Let's open on uh, a cemetery at night. There's a low fog hanging on the ground, making the tombstones look like jagged, misshapen teeth. This music kind is of too much. Rising up from a misty lake. And in the distance, we uh, close in on a large abandoned church that overlooks the graveyard. Maybe there's some broken shingles uh, dangling from uh, the building and the windows all are, are boarded up from the outside, including like a huge stained glass one in the back. It's all boarded up. Now we see a large figure approaching this temple, abandoned temple. Maybe a sound in the distance causes this figure to turn and they look and just see two ravens, like, fighting over some vermin. And the figure looks back, removes his cowl. And we see a, a familiar knoll. 
known as Karasor. <laughs> Amazing. He's aged. His, his skills have atrophied as he's gone from sixth to third level. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? But Karazor quietly enters this church. Now we're inside, and there's just like uh, moonlight shafts coming in from holes in the ceiling, the little parts of the windows where the boards aren't covering up. So it's it's creating this really interesting, uh, almost theatrical setting with these shafts of light everywhere. And Karzor looks down a long row of pews to the stained glass window, which is boarded up on the outside, so not the inside, so he can see uh, that this looks like it used to be a church dedicated to Desna, the goddess of travel and luck, fortune. A voice rings out from somewhere in the darkness. Who stands before us this night? Is that my cue? Yeah, what do you say? I am Karazur. That is my name. You say that, and a a long-haired, slender figure emerges from the darkness somewhere maybe behind the altar. And you see that this, it's got to be a woman, is wearing the unmistakable mask of the crystal ghost. (laughs) She says, Were you followed? No. I was very careful. And you can see, too, that at some point he suffered kind of a maiming injury to his face. Like he's got a scar going down from his upper eyelid to his lower eyelid, and his left eye is just milky. And he has his glasses on his uh, sort of perched on his snout. The one over the left eye is like painted black. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right, so she said, where are you falling? No, he's like, she says, uh, good, good. And at that moment, suddenly several other figures emerge from all around you, and they stand in these various shafts of light. And though it's dark in there and ominous, you can see that they're all wearing the mask of the crystal ghost. Oh, shit. In the decade... <laughs> Since the uh, executioner's axe fell across the necks of your allies, uh, the crystal ghost has become not only a symbol for vigilante justice, but a movement that you are tied up in. What is glass will never shatter. You hear those words ring out in your ears. (laughs) You hear the unmistakable voice of the original Crystal Ghost <laughs> with her famous <laughs> catchphrase. Yeah, the nonsensical catchphrase. Things she would sense. always say. What is glass? <laughs> what, is glass? <laughs> what is glass will usually shatter? <laughs> no mistake <laughs> that means. Nosh, I wielded for justice. What? The, vo- the voice continues <laughs> in your head. Uh, wielded glass is unlikely to shatter. What is happening? <laughs> Put that down. <laughs> if you don't want it to shatter, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Put it I don't down. understand the metaphor. <laughs> don't run with it. She always spoke in riddles, Karazor. She did. But you remember her fondly. That's uh, what and I loved the- about her. <laughs> and her friend. Well... <laughs> I don't know what their attitude was toward each other. I never saw them together. I never saw them interact. <laughs> I don't know if they got along. Maybe they didn't. That's maybe perhaps that's why they avoided each other's presence so assiduously. This uh, this woman that stands before you obviously is a bunch of different crystal ghosts, but the one that originally uh, addressed you uh, goes on, uh, and she says, I'll, "I'll I'll make this brief." As you may know, Nekesor has struck another decisive blow. His territory now unofficially stretches all the way south from Pangale into the foothills of the Menador Mountains, and word has it that his claws have begun to reach into both Nirmathas and Molthun as well. 
the Umbral Court continues to turn a blind eye, and we believe that can only be due to deals that he has made from within. The many years he spent trapped on the Shadow Plane looking for a way out allowed him much time to study other planes as well. His knowledge of the First World and the Fey have made him more powerful than he ever was when just the Kyal rallied to his banner. We cannot wait any longer. Another one speaks up, maybe a guy with the crystal ghost mass. He's like, uh, now as troubling as these new, allowance, uh, these new alliances may be, our intel leads us to believe it's all a ploy to distract us from something else. Are you familiar with the impossible lands? Did you not grow up near there? And he kind of gives a little... That's the thing about hyenas. They make really weird fucking sounds. Like, everybody's going to think it's like the laughing and everything. But if you guys heard, like, hyenas, like, they make these really bizarre sounds. And he makes sort of a nervous kind of chittering sound. And, uh... Yes, I do know it. Them. And you know that it is a realm of strange magic. It was founded by the two wizard kings, Geb and Nex, whose centuries-long arcane war forever altered the land and its people. It is the perfect place for Nikesor to try and gain a foothold. There is an island off the coast called Bopan. It is a place steeped in mystery and danger. Long ago, there was uh, an adventurer, a pathfinder, in fact, who sought something there and never returned. We believe Nikesor seeks what this man sought, but we'd be foolish to believe that he will suffer the same fate. We have a friendly in the Pathfinder Society who has arranged a boat to take you there. His name is Coomrock Blackthane. If you can find out what happened to this explorer, we will no doubt find what Nikesa seeks next. Yeah. I think Karzor, he really wants revenge. He wants justice for the loss of all of his companions, the humiliation. But he's also, I think he's terrified of Nikasaur too. I mean, like this was, this was the most dangerous thing that he ever came across. This is the most peril he's ever been in. And you've and, probably spent the better part of the last 10 years just always looking over your shoulder. Yeah, basically on the run. So he's, uh, yeah, he's torn in the moment. Um, between his desire for revenge and his fear, but I think he thinks of he thinks of his friends and what it would feel like to put Nikasur back in his place, and he kind of and he's he's kind of he's almost like cowering. He's got like a little arthritic. He's like his his hands are like kind of arthritic now, and and. Uh, this is like streaks of gray all through his spots. He's kind of he's kind of like hunched over a little bit. He straightens himself up, and he's like, "Yes, yes, it would be good to take a, a sea voyage. It has been too long. It will be good to go home." Another maybe another one speaks up. Another woman, perhaps. It's like, all right. Well, time is of the essence. It is too dangerous to go this alone. There is little known of Bopan and its inhabitants, if there are any. You should assemble a team. And once that team is assembled, sail for the port city of Quantium in Nex. Blackthane will be there, waiting. 
Now the society does not know why we are interested in this. They just want to know the fate of this explorer. One of their founding members, in fact. We help them. They help us. Do you understand? I think I do. What part of that wasn't clear? <laughs> um, what was the middle thing you said? Which... About the, the assembling the team? What was the first word? Just what the, the first word. I believe I, it was time. Got it. Assemble the team. <laughs> all right, good. Assemble the team. Seems like we're all clear here. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Best of luck to you. And remember, what is glass may never break. I stopped say saying that. It, it doesn't glass make any sense. Glass may never shatter. Glass may never shatter. All of you. Glass may never shatter. Why? <laughs> and they all recede into the dark. <laughs> Why did you kick her? <laughs> I don't what? know. What does that mean? Yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Gibberish! Don't you understand? <laughs> As you cry out into the abandoned church. <laughs> You're all insane. <laughs> Wide shot of you yelling in the darkness. Now we see you standing at the edge of a boat, looking out at the sea. Perhaps uh, in the distance we can see, uh, far, far distance, the lights of, of Quantium this town that you're heading but for now they seem so distant you've been tasked with assembling a team to help you on this endeavor so let's have another person step into view uh, Jared I, what we, we last week we created the character I imagine yeah your but your your character comes up on to the boat what do they what do they physically look like well, Rufus of Opara has long, flowing, raven black hair and a frilly tunic open down his chest and in a in a sparkly belt, really a jangly with a big shiny belt buckle and like uh, uh, bell bottom type pants. And on the exposed part of his chest, you could see a dragon tattoo. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so on brand. Oh, and earrings, <laughs> earrings, and a nose ring. But the nose ring looks a little infected. <laughs> it's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Is there uh, a barber in the house? <laughs> if only there was a barber. If only yeah. there were a barber. I'm going to have the robot look at it later. <laughs> <laughs> so let's close in on the eyes of Rufus as you uh, take in the same view that Karazar is looking at. And let's do an improvisational flashback of how Karazar recruited you. Where This can be a, a collaborative thing here. Where do you think Karazar had to go to find you? Well, I mean, I've been traveling... Avistan performing in various taverns with my band but my <laughs> my band and I had some creative differences and they have decided to go in a different direction so I was uh, I was basically busking for money <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a corner in uh, you know I don't know Molthoon or something. <laughs> oh, I like this. All right, so we uh, cut to exterior of a of a Molthoon tavern. You hear lively music inside. Maybe there's a uh, a marquee, and if you look really closely, you can see the faded out le letters that say like, "Performing tonight, Johnny Halfling." Oh, <laughs> it's, been, it's never quite been able to be rubbed out. Just too many sparkles in the paint they use. Too many sparkles there. <laughs> There's still a guy trying to fix it. Uh, but tonight, uh, Magic Missile is playing. Magic uh, Missile. However. They're derivative. They're derivative. <laughs> however, this flashy bar in Malthoon, we, we pan down to a street performer uh, trying to, uh, trying to uh, get money from passersby. Carasaur. You are one such passersby. And I'm so. trying to do a full glam rock performance, but I just have like a loot and I'm standing on a street corner. So I'm like, and the dragon's breath. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the city's burn! <laughs> <laughs> Karazur stops and tosses a silver piece into his case, loot case. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Hey, don't I know you? Didn't you used to be the front man for Tiamat? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've listened to Tiamat. <laughs> in which case, you would have had to have been in the same physical location of Tia as Tiamat. My band. Yeah, I, I used to sing for them. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've moved on to other projects. Yes, I can't say I ever cared for your music. but Oh, well, a lot of people don't like the kind of experimental structures that we were implementing in some of our chords. Yeah. Yes, it's pretty off-putting. Kind of atonal and weird. Some would say some would say we were sort of pushing the envelope of like what's possible, uh, you know. Uh, it's true, audio wise. But I I can see why, you know, like you know, someone like you might not have have really glommed on to it. Yeah. Well, I think if you push the envelope too hard, you break the envelope, and then your mail leaks out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anyway, hey. I'm trying to put together a team. <laughs> oh. What, and like for adventuring? An adventuring team. Unless you're too good for adventuring. You're too busy here at your job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Such disdain. Such <laughs> condescension. <laughs> your, you're too job. busy here at your job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm kind of workshopping some new pieces, and things are going really well here, actually. And then I kind of, like, look through my loot case, and there's, like, a silver piece that you threw in, and some coppers. Yes. Uh, I mean, so I don't good. really like to release the dragon anymore, you know? It, it doesn't go good places, you know? I mean, I'm well, trying I to... Saw. Uh, that was the best thing about that show when the dragon came out. That was cool. <laughs> you understand that Velthrex and Bob is was the scourge, the scourge of Casimir, right? I mean, Velthrex and Bob is a force of pure evil that seeks only to plunder and to break the land and its people. Is that true? I thought that was like a uh, kayfabe. <laughs> 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 What's uh, what's this adventurer pay? Well, uh, I don't want any of the crowd here that's gathered to hear you play to hear, but looks around, there's no one there. <laughs> it could be riches aplenty, more than enough to keep you in drugs or whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we're not like, you know, basically like oppressing like indigenous peoples or, you know, following the party line for some sort of oppressive government, right? Because I'm chaotic. Oh, I see. Well, then, uh, yes, that, that, that stands to reason. No, I am not my mother. Not that you know who that is, but... We won't be doing any of that stuff. This is a really assured. weird sales pitch. <laughs> I, know, I, know. <laughs> I like mother. to mention, Mom. Why are we talking about your mother? It's not important. What is important is that there are there's great wealth to be gained, an adventure to be had, and perhaps even new audiences that won't be nauseated by your special brand of performing. Actually, <laughs> nauseation is one of my goals acoustically, but I'm in. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we shall we shall meet at the docks and on. He like he like wraps his Wait, on his face. I don't know. How disappears to, uh, into the night. I don't know how to get there. Come back. <laughs> and we fade Where? out. Docks. <laughs> Wait, don't fade <laughs> out yet. Where? It's a landlock. <laughs> Stop <laughs> fading out. Stop fading out. <laughs> Cars are as deep into the night. <laughs> As Rufus. <laughs> but I don't understand. <laughs> Come back. And we will meet another character right after this break.
Welcome, scoundrels. My name is Jared Logan. I am the Game Master Blades in the Dark. My favorite tabletop role-playing game, the greatest tabletop role-playing game. That sounds like a lot of hyperbole. <laughs> Believe it, goddammit. This underworld exploration in a haunted steampunk city. My amazing cast, incredible actor and role player, the gaming nut. Please welcome Abu Salim, actress role player incredible someone i want on every game i play josephine mcadam erudite scholar of the occult is ross bryant and this game is a, a game about committing crimes uh getting away with it uh not getting caught if you get caught you're not doing it right no that's terrible <laughs> no, that's a good that's a good way to think of playing blades in the dark you're in a haunted victorian era city trapped inside a wall of lightning powered by demon blood Wow, that's yeah. great. That's a bar. That is a bar. Uh, any questions? Due to time constraints, the next character that comes up is Matthew's character. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, very quickly, tell me what they look like. <laughs> uh, well, he's uh, Balthazar is a seven foot, uh, one inch tall Jeez. chrome automaton. It's like minute bowl size. <laughs> <laughs> he really, the face really does look kind of like a Scion Centurion. Um, and he's, he's, uh, he's got on it, but on his, uh, his, his chrome fingers around, around his hands, he's got some magical hand wraps. Like he's been working at, at the, at the, at the he's working the speed bag. Yeah, sure. Um, where do you want to meet? It's good. Where would we find each other? Yeah, where do you think you, have you a were? shop? In the barber shop? No, no, he's a traveling barber. Well, oh. happy, maybe, maybe I'm cutting your hair. Are you, uh, maybe you're cutting someone else's hair. All right. So, yeah, uh, uh. I'll, I'll be cutting someone's hair, just like out in the out in the meadow. They're sitting on a they're sitting on a stool, and I've got my I've, I I I pop off my uh, my left arm and pop on a sickle attachment. <laughs> I then use a sickle and a dagger to just chop cut the hair. Just a little okay. off the top, please. <laughs> of course. And also, I have herpes. <laughs> 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 so it's a one-stop shop. The barber is the barber, doctor, aren't you? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I thought you were you are, very, <laughs> you are very wise to come to me with this affliction. I would be happy to help you. I have just the cure. Would you like to hear what I can do for it? Please. Well, once we're done with your hair, I can remove the affected organs with this sickle arm and then let you bleed out, and then I can stuff the organs into your mouth and display your body somewhere <laughs> that will terrify the populace at large. I, I think I'd like a referral to another barber. <laughs> what is your right to get a second opinion? And at that moment, Karazar <laughs> sits in the chair next to yours. Yeah, <laughs> I sit down in the... These two chairs. There's two chairs in this meadow. This, in this I outdoor down, meadow. <laughs> I sit down the other one. Pull out, pull out my our, he just travels with two stools attached to his, <laughs> attached to his, to his back. <laughs> so at any moment, he can set up a barbershop. Oh, hello, Sir Noel. Would you... Uh, well, what may I do for you? Hello. Have you ever, have you ever cut no fur before? Oh, yes. barber? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> About 5,000 years ago, I was uh, quite the craze in the Noel community. Oh, all right. Then I'll have a Gene Hackman, please. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> not, too, not too tight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I move over to come, I, and I, I pop off the, uh, the sickle attachment, and I pop on a comb attachment, and I begin okay. to uh, <laughs> just comb out your hair, comb out your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the other guy uh, if he's still there, if he's leaving. Yeah, he's and, there. And uh, I say, 
My dear sir, I think that is the worst haircut I've ever seen. You should see what he did downstairs. <laughs> and he walks away. Well, if, if, if I may say so, Sir mm. Noel, you have possibly the grayest fur of any Noel I've ever encountered. Oh, well, thank you. You must Gray be. fur is the sign of a Noel who's reached an age where he's defeated all of his enemies and cannot die ever for any <laughs> <laughs> And is that the story of your life? You have defeated all of your enemies. Uh, so far? Why? And he, like, pulls off the barber sheets and he stands up and he's just like, You think you can take me, you dumb robot? <laughs> <laughs> and Balthazar pops off, his, pops off the comb attachment, pops back on his fist attachment, and goes, Put up your dukes, sir. <laughs> And I do. I put my dukes up. Are we rolling for initiative right now? <laughs> no, no, <I> do. <laughs> Bye. It's a flavor fight. Yeah, flavor fight. And then we, so we, we circle around each other, yeah. <laughs> and I, I take a swing, and maybe you, like, duck under it. I dodge, and I take yeah. a swing. And you catch me, like, clean in the snout. It's a pinch, <laughs> and that knocked me back on my butt. And I said, ah, the rumors were true. You are indeed a deadly of the deadliest of all barbers. <laughs> I have need of one such as such as you, with skills as varied and strange as you possess. Will we be able to kill people in this endeavor of yours? Ha! The other rumors I heard are also true, it seems. Yes, there will be plenty of opportunity for you to savage flesh and cut limb from limb. May I Ritualistically disembowel them. All right. Uh, then, then count, 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 count me in. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this is all working splendidly, and I just walk away. <laughs> Wait, where shall I meet you? Fade where out. Is this? <laughs> Fade out. <laughs> How did they ever get to this boat? <laughs> <laughs> That's the mystery to solve is the difference between the first encounter and actually arriving at the boat. I'm just imagining like this like someone walking past this meadow and seeing a seven foot tall automaton and a knoll wearing glasses <laughs> just like having their dukes up dancing around each other. How shadow you? boxing. A <laughs> bizarre scene. <laughs> Knocking over bar jars of barbicide. <laughs> so now, finally, we see Joe's character. You can't quite tell in the uh, in the light if it's a sorcerer, a champion, or whatever Joe's changed it to in the last 25 minutes. <laughs> so what do they look like, Joe? It is my goal to roll nothing for this episode so that I still have another episode of Plausible Deniability <laughs> <laughs> to actually build this character um, stepping up onto the ship you see straight out of well no actually no that's not true what you would see is what looks like a human uh, archer but uh, you know, armored chain shirt, uh, armored pant lay, uh, armored uh, pants and and uh, and boots, black leather gloves, and uh, but hooded and masked, uh, no you know visible skin anywhere, and like very skinny and lanky looking at about six one, uh, and it you know he's just kind of like walking up the plank onto this ship, and. His his mask is, it's just. I kind of think uh, I kind of picture like Deadpool almost, where it's like black, but there's kind of like the eyes are, they're kind of bluish and they almost glow a little bit, uh, almost giving you from a distance the appearance of like blue eyes, but really there's kind of you look close there's like come light there light emanating from behind. Mm. Cut to the circus. Absalom. <laughs> For God's sake. What is he doing at the circus? <laughs> <laughs> what is he 
<laughs> wow. Great. You know, thanks. Where, where do you think? <laughs> take it to show. Just take it to show for the big adventure. Close in on a Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel operator has a mask. Uh, where, do you, where do you think cars are tracked down? Uh, champ kindly. Um, you know, I think that he doesn't. I think he doesn't track him down. I think that oh. uh, maybe Karazor is like looking for someone else. Is <laughs> like uh, during his journey, and he like is camping at night, and he hears like a rustle in the woods, a little distance off. You know, a, a sound of someone walking, perhaps danger coming up on him. Russell, is that you? <laughs> Russell. <laughs> Yes, I heard you were looking for adventurers. Russell, I've been looking all over for you. Yes, I'm, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and fade out. <laughs> what class is Russell? What class is Russell? <laughs> Russell. He's a multi-class sorcerer champion. Okay. <laughs> sorcerer champion with a fighter dedication. Yes, yeah, sorcerer champion with a fighter dedication. <laughs> um, well, who's there? So, Who is it? Uh, sorry. Um, and then, like, sort of coming into your firelight, you see a figure similar to what we see come on the boat. Only when that figure came on the boat, he was much more um, well put together looking in terms of his disguise, you know, of what you all know. In this case, he's holding a bow and he's walking out between these bushes and trees. And there's enough. uh, There's like no mask. There's just like like. you know, almost like mummy wrappings kind of like around his face. And it's like kind of hanging loosely off a little bit. And you can just see exposed bone, uh, you know, as he's coming around. And uh, and he's just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disturb you. Um, I, I was just uh, adventuring like any normal adventurer. Are you an adventurer? Uh, yes, I am. I, oh, I'm sorry. that's excellent, because I am also one. Yes, you look pretty adventurous. You don't look at all well, though. I'm feeling what, all what, right. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? And he's like <laughs> trying to push this like fallen band up to cover the exposed <laughs> bone of his face. <laughs> well, not to put too fine a point on it, but you don't have any skin. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I just uh, very sick. Uh, I mean, I was burned. Yes, I should say so. I was burned. I mean, uh, in, an, uh, in an adventuring accident while raiding a, a nearby tomb. There's a tomb, <laughs> and I beat it. I see. <laughs> with my friend Russell. <laughs> with my friend Russell. Yeah, he did. I, thought... I was there. <laughs> see. <laughs> He corroborates, and then he points, as he points to Russell, as the band, the band falls off again, the bandage. Well, Russell, I, I was actually looking for Russell. Russell, uh, would you be interested in going on an adventure? We're, a, we're partners. We're a package deal. Oh, you either take both deal, of us or eh? none of us. Well, I really only need the one. I was really <laughs> hoping to employ the services of Russell the Inevitable. <laughs> well, how I'm about s- a yeah. contest? A contest of strength. All right. The two of you shall battle for my enjoyment and edification. Whoever wins gets to come on the adventure. How, how about target shooting? Yes, excellent. <laughs> the Russell. target shall be each other's faces. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they go at it, and Russell wins handily. <laughs> this is obvious. <laughs> it's Wait, clear. Uh, it's a period. And by the time he's done beating him, you see, like, all of his, like, bandages and shit are pulled away, and he's obviously a skeleton. 
Uh, he's obviously a skeleton. <laughs> and, and Russell comes up and he's like, hey, man, he really needs this. He really needs a win. And he gets back up. <laughs> he's like, uh, Russell liberated me. <laughs> and I swear, I will do my best to do as he has done. I Russell, haven't been sure. This is what a very is important. <laughs> and he like yells and it's just like a, like a, a, a bird, a bat flies over the thing. Uh, over the campfire and he's just like completely like freaked out by it sorry I'm a little jumpy but I'll get used to it I haven't been outside ever in my life please take him off my hands Russ I'm really not sure about this guy <laughs> I I just want to be free man what he's, are you guys saying it's alright um, right, look I owe you one buddy after that business in uh, Kadira who could forget who could forget? All right, for you. But after this, we're even. They shake hands. They <laughs> I want to like, see this story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to hear the story of Russell, the guy who finally the whole thing. <laughs> knocked off Russell the necromancer <laughs> while Carzer was asleep outside. <laughs> and they both turned to look at Champ, who's just sitting there. <laughs> and now you're on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bondi. Let's hit the road. Bonesy. The best second choice there is. And uh, the four of you are now uh, on the deck and you're getting closer uh, to the port city of Quantium. And then you arrive. And right as you exit the boat, you know, the sailors are tying the boat down to the dock and whatnot. You can see there's an outdoor tavern, uh, a stone's throw away from where you're docking. Uh, and there's a dwarf uh, sitting outside uh, drinking a, a beer. Uh, and he waves, waves to you, Karazor. All right. I give a little, a little nod. And I, I gesture for the others to come with me, and we join him at his table. Join him at his table. And he's like, ah, it's not often we see gnolls about. I take it you are Mr. Karazor. I am indeed. And may I assume that you are Mr. Blackthane? Indeed, Kumrock Blackthane, at your service. Our voices sound similar. They do. I think we'll get along splendidly. <laughs> <laughs> and he drinks <laughs> he drinks this mug of like stout and it gets all in his white beard. He's like, Can I get you something to drink? They have a banana chocolate imperial stout here. So good it'll make you kiss your sister on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't do that, cause she's your sister. <laughs> but you'll be drunk from the stout. What, what do you want? Can I get you something? Drinks on me. Uh, uh, I would have, I would love a limoncello in a tiny glass. All right, I think they might have that. And uh, you, sir, points at uh, Rufus. I lean in really close and I go, you got anything that goes in the other hole? <laughs> It's a brewery, but uh, a brewery. I'll see if they have any cocaine <laughs> <laughs> and a sure. shot of wi- and a shot of whiskey. Whiskey, they have. Um, thanks, thanks, Chief. I'm, uh, they know me around here. I'll see what I can rustle up from the bus it, boys. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't, <laughs> I'm sure the kitchen staff will be able to point me in the right direction. <laughs> It doesn't have to be cocaine, you know, just anything stronger, anything for a good time, you know. Fair enough. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm not one to deny a man his pleasures. And, I, got a uh, drag, I got a dragon on my back. You understand. I don't. <laughs> but <laughs> you, and you, uh, you're, uh, look at you, looking at uh, <laughs> um, B- Bartholomew. What the heck's your name? Balthazar. Balthazar. <laughs> look at you. Do you, uh, do you drink human drinks? I require neither food nor drink, but if it will make you feel more comfortable, I would gladly take a glass of water that I will hold in my hand and crush and use the shards to gouge out the eyes of anyone who offends us. I am not getting you a water. <laughs> and you, s- sir, it's, it's, a, it's a warm summer's day. Why are you wearing that hood and mask on your face? I, I have hideous burns. That is all, <laughs> and I love the taste of stout. 
It tastes so good to me. <laughs> and then he's looking around, he's like, <laughs> and I was told Russell would be here. I know, I know. There That's was a, a little, really long story. A little bit Russell? of a miscommunication with Russell. It's not important. It's a long oh, story. We Russell really... sends his regards. He's not going to be able to make it. But I, I, I can promise you that this group is going to be at least as good as half of what Russell could deliver. All right. We were really counting on him, but... Uh, can no! I have that stout, please? I'm dying to drink it. All right, creepy. And he orders uh, Limoncello a stout, uh, <laughs> no water for <laughs> uh, uh, Balthazar, and and he leans <laughs> over. Get the bus boys to the <laughs> Ask them. And the guy runs off. All right, well, I'm sure you've had a long journey, and there is another one ahead of you. As you lot may have heard, we're currently uh, looking into the trail. Uh, one of the old founding members of the Pathfinder Society, a man by the name of Selmius Foster. Now, he made uh, loads of discoveries before he uh, vanished on an island way, way out here in the Obari Ocean. We're pretty sure he died there, but uh, we don't know the details other than some mention. Uh, it was a journal. Uh, as one of his companions published said that he was murdered by some uh, dog-faced uh, people, whatever that means. Uh, now, I understand that uh, my society has made a deal with uh, your people, as it were. Uh, now, it's not my business. Uh, I, I'm just here because I meant to uh, take you uh, to the jungle isle of Bopan uh, and to remind you of, of your business with us, and that is to find out what you can about old Selmius. Whatever else you do is your own business. Now, here's the thing about Bopan. There's supposed to be a city there, but no one knows for sure. If there is anyone there, they have no contact uh, with the mainland. And they have no contact with the Galarian at all, as far as anyone knows. Now, the weather over there is, is, is pretty rough this time of year, so there's a decent chance that we'll have to drop you all off on the far side of the aisle. So you should all prepare for a trek through the jungle. Are you all uh, hearty enough for jungle, overland jungle travel? Yeah, I can't, I can't do that. What is a Ka jungle? Karazar, <laughs> Karazar, you didn't tell me there'd be like jungle survival and things like that. I can't. Well, it'll be good for you. Get a little hot, humid air in your lungs. I don't have the clothes for it. I'm not, I'm not dressed for it. Well, I we'll do a little shopping carry. before we leave. Carrying Sorry? other beings is deeply offensive to me. Hmm. Unless they're dismembered. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I refuse to go on the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> so you're Listen. all of it in accord. Jungle travelers ain't okay with this group. <laughs> Anyways, you're smart, so I don't have to tell you. If there's any life there, if you find any life, try not to make any fuss with the locals. You got me? There's a good this chance. Guy's, uh, this guy's not even listening to us. He just <laughs> keeps talking. I know. Yeah. <laughs> His own way of doing things. Is this is this not is this team not equipped, Karazor? Do we need to find more people because this, we cannot mess around with this? No, no. I think we just need to do some light shopping at and uh, at the bazaar, and then we'll be fine. I think that's all. All we need is just looking like at all of them. Is just like, please go along with this. <laughs> <laughs> you totally picked the wrong group. Yes. <laughs> all we need for the jungle shopping. How is the stout, champ? I was just about to try it, but I want to get a better look at the bar. <laughs> he stands up and he's like, I like this bar. And he just like <laughs> walks away and starts looking around and then like dips what? like into a corner where no one's looking and pours some of it out. <laughs> and then like starts walking back. The construction is really incredible here. The boom beams, the way they, and this is delicious. And it's gone. Did you just, just sits back down. Did you just pour some of your beer out in the corner? I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> Oh, he drank it. It's currently I said filling I his flesh the, belly. This <laughs> taste of stout is something I have always liked. So much. Now listen. <laughs> There's a chance old Selmius didn't leave uh, the Pathfinder Society with the best reputation over there, assuming there is some sort of life. So try to be discreet and tactful. 
Do you understand? Mm. And the knoll, the automaton, the skeleton, and the guy with the dragon. And all the rock nod. star. <laughs> all <laughs> nod. <laughs> yes. All yeah. nod. And we'll see you That's next our, week. <laughs> That's our specialty. I said we'll see you next week. That's it. Oh, with all oh, of you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got off. As you were all nodding. <laughs> yeah. we'll, see you next week. <laughs> well, we'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. Russell yeah. would have heard me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to build a new class. Here we go, baby. <laughs>